how is it going everybody happy thursday i am um i am actually in my car because the life of a uh, of a real estate agent is a busy life uh this morning i had uh i had a um i had a presentation that i was giving to uh to um a group of uh, new realtors and uh, basically uh, letting them know how to start the business and, and how to go about um, uh, how to go about and set up to uh, to for success and and I was uh, talking about morning routines and and routines in general uh, so uh, so uh, uh, today I uh, uh, as you know, we had uh, we had a live talk with one of my colleagues uh, out of New York, Long Island, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, I am trying to get a hold of him and get him to uh, come to our talk so that we can we can learn about his uh, town and learn about um, about uh, Long Island, New York, which is one of the places that I used to live in. Well, actually, not quite in Long Island, Long Island, New York, but uh, very close to it in Flushing, Queens, which is one of the boroughs of New York City. And uh, so, while we are waiting and hoping that uh, that my colleague joins us, let's talk about morning routines. Let's talk about what um, what actually takes to become successful and and to become. Uh, responsible adults. I don't. I don't believe that morning routines are uh, the necessity necessity just for success. Even though we all in life want to be successful, but we also want to uh, become responsible adults. I have two teenagers um, uh, right now, and my uh, two teenagers are uh, are amazing, and I love them to death. Uh, but they're teenagers. And um, and I think part of the morning routine that that sets everybody up for success is to get up early and have a schedule of things that you follow um, in order to in order to make sure that that you become a responsible adult. Now we all know that uh, that teenagehood and sleeping uh, sleeping late uh, go hand in hand. And uh, becoming an adult and becoming a successful adult um, also is, uh, in my opinion, um, synonymous to getting up early and uh, setting up a, a set of routine that you follow uh, in in your morning to make sure that you uh, are you become successful. Uh, most of us in life work uh, nine to five uh, sort of jobs. And um, I, I think that the one time I was talking to an attorney and the attorney was saying, well, we all do things in the society in a certain manner because uh, because the way that the society has has uh, set everything up, um, the society has actually figured out that that is the best way and the most efficient way to get uh, to where we want to go. And uh, and so. Uh, that being the case, that's why it is so important to uh, to set up a morning routine. Um, so um, I am very excited to actually bring Mike Foley, m m who is my agent partner out of uh, out of um, Long Island, New York. So here we are. Let's talk to Mike. Hey, Roxanne. Okay, let's try that again. Can you hear me? Hello, Mike. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Can you hear Doing me? Doing great. I'm actually super excited to uh, have you on the show because uh, because the area that you are is an amazing area. And, uh, and for us here in San Diego, California, it's a great place to visit. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Busy as usual. As you can see, I'm in my car, just wrapped up a listing appointment. So we're, we're moving and grooving. It's funny that you say that because I am doing the same thing. I am in my car, had a uh, had a busy morning, had a uh, talk in the, in the morning that I did to a group of real estate agents. And uh, and now we are uh, we're d doing this together, and uh, and sounds like your your day is just as busy, which is great. 
Yes. So tell yes. us a little bit about about you and your business. Cool. Yeah. So basically, um, I started in the business a little over seven years ago. Started as a solo agent. Knew absolutely nothing about real estate. Came from the car sales business. Um, about three years into my career, once I started to find some success, I started a small team of about three agents. Uh, grew to about six agents. And then in 2022, I actually opened up an independent brokerage in Long Island. So now I uh, have 31 agents at my office. Very nice. Very nice. Excellent. Okay. And, uh, and you're breaking up a little bit. Um, let's see if we can continue and, and, uh, get this, uh, better. So, uh, so you said that you started seven years ago as a solo agent. Yep. Seven years ago as a solo agent, about two to three years into my career, I started a small team, about five agents. Um, and then I opened my own brokerage independently owned in July of 22. So now we're at about 31 agents total at my brokerage. Uh, I am still producing, but more on a referral past client basis at this point. Right, right. So, so a successful entrepreneur, which is uh, which is awesome, and uh, and I believe that we met at a uh, Tom Ferry event, if I'm we not did. mistaken. We did. We did. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so uh, so tell us about uh, tell us uh, about uh, this amazing business. How do, how did you go from a solo agent to uh, to uh, a team leader with uh, with uh, how many agents did you say you have now? I have thirty one now. Yeah, so it's uh... so. Uh, so everybody, you are getting uh, into the life of a uh, of a busy real estate agent, and of course, uh, the way that we are on the go, and uh, we have to we have to run the business, and we have to also um, uh, honor our uh, our commitments, such as the commitment that that you and uh, that um, Mike and I we have to you to bring you this uh, uh, this uh, show today even with all the technical difficulties that we have. So let me, uh, let me see if, uh, if Mike can uh, join us again. And, um, and it's interesting that Mike is, uh, is talking about the fact that his business, uh, his business went from solo to, uh, to 30 agents and, uh, and the journey of entrepreneurship. So, I'm Let's so keep sorry. Going. One of my investors actually was trying to call me as we're on this and it somehow booted me off. Um, so yeah, a little bit more about my business. So I started in the business knowing absolutely nothing. Um, and networking was my best friend. So what I did was I just wanted everyone to know that I'm the guy to talk to. You want to buy, sell, invest, rent, invest, give me a call. Um, social media was my friend, um, was heavy on social media, Instagram, Facebook, working my sphere. And eventually built out a business that uh, continued to pay me in return and continued to send me clients um, and built a very much so referral based business. A lot of the online leads and stuff that you see nowadays, I did not have. Um, it was just solely networking sphere, following up, hosting as many open houses as I can. Just more hands you shake, the more money you make. And uh, I was uh, that was kind of my motto. So it's it. Uh, uh Mom, explain to us because this is this is very very interesting. Explain to us how you went from from a solo agent to managing 30, uh, 30 agents because uh, because it's a completely different uh, business. Um, sure, so, sure. Uh, so, tell us somewhat, how somewhat, you have somewhat by accident, a little bit intentional, but um, I uh, I brought on a buyer's agent. Um, that was kind of how I started with the team build out. Um, it was just a lot of, I felt things falling through the cracks because I had a lot of buyer leads coming in and I was very listing focused at the time. So it was just, I felt like I was probably leaving money on the table. So I brought on another inexperienced agent that worked with me, um, at the office and I said, Hey, you want to take some of my leads? I like, I like how you work. Um, and I'll teach you, I'll teach you what I know. And, you know, eventually, you know, you could build out your own business. And he was grateful for that. So one thing led to the next, I really, really enjoyed coaching him. Um, so as I enjoyed coaching him and getting a little bit better at the coaching aspect of things, um, I went ahead and then I actually brought on a couple of more agents. 
And then one thing led to the next. And one of my agents is like, hey, I have another agent who wants to come work for you. Um, and then I had a little team going of about five or six agents. Um, and then over time, uh, I just got the feeling that I wanted to open a brokerage. Uh, I really, since early on in the business, it was a dream of mine to have a brokerage. Um, and then the phone. In 2022, uh, I just pulled the trigger. I'm like, now's the time. Um, and, and I went for it. We did very well from 2020 to 2022 out here in Long Island. And um, I just was like, let's go all in. And uh, kind of took the leap of faith. And a lot of it was trial and error, to be honest with you. Figuring out what sticks and what doesn't. Uh, throwing things against the wall and see if they stick, as they call it. Um, and, and here we are today. And just continuously trying to get better and figuring out what works best. And eliminating the stuff that doesn't work. That That is amazing. The part that's fascinating is, is uh, you know, going from, from being one, you were basically a salesperson, going into managing 30, uh, 30 other agents, you become a manager, not just a salesperson. And, yep. and uh, so the, the difference between two mu must, be, must be huge. Yes, it is indeed. Uh, it's definitely a big transition. Um, and uh, it, it was a gradual one. You know, the team was like my mini brokerage within the brokerage. Um, so it kind of was my opportunity to feel out if uh, if this is the right thing for me or not. And I guess my advice to anyone who wants to start a brokerage um, would be to start running a small team first, because it is very similar with a little less risk and a lot less overhead. But it is very similar in a lot of the management aspects and providing for, you know, the agents and on, on that level and the coaching. So if you don't like that, you're definitely not going to like running a brokerage. And it's interesting because I'm also a broker and uh, and I've been a broker since 2006. And um, what's what's your advice in terms of in terms of being a team leader versus being a broker? Where, where, where do you, uh, where is your sure. recommendation sure, between the sure. two? And, and to this day, there's still pros and cons for me for both. You know, I, I, I you know, the team leader role is fantastic. Um, you have a lot less liability. You have a lot less overhead. You know, the overhead is a big thing. you got to be prepared to um, have a lot of bills to pay every month where, yeah, as a team lead, you know, you have marketing expenses and things like that. But you don't have rent. You don't have cable. You don't have the gas bill. You know, there's a lot of other things that, you know, you don't, have a, you don't necessarily always have a secretary that you need. Um, but uh, as far as running the team to the brokerage, I mean, for me, the brokerage model is something that I feel I can I have infinite potential with. Where when I ran a team, I felt a little bit capped. When I tried to go after more producing agents, there was only so much I could offer that there was still anything left on the bone for me. Um, so I felt it made it very challenging. It was very easy to pick up new agents. Um, and you know how it is with new agents being a broker. Some get into this business and in a few months realize that it's not for them. Um, so you never really know with a new agent until they start working. Um, so to go after the experienced agents, I felt like I had to be able to set my own terms in order for it to uh, be successful. And, uh, you know, and uh, sky's the limit. I'm a, I'm a big thinker. I'm a dreamer a little bit. Um, so I always want more and more, you know. So the brokerage model is what I went after. That, I, I totally agree with you. And, and, uh, and I can't say that, uh, that it's any different uh, for me. Uh, let me ask you this, because, um, uh, because with me... I've uh, I've always enjoyed uh, selling. I've all always enjoyed working with uh, buyers and sellers, and um, also also in terms of in terms of profitability, there's a there's a lot more that you can make as uh, you know in terms of uh, working directly with buyers and sellers um, versus versus you know uh, stepping away from working with buyers and sellers and production and uh, and let your agents do that work in terms of profitability how do you um, how do you bridge that gap and uh, you know uh, ha have you completely stepped out of production and if so um, how did you make that decision we've all heard the term broker edge you know and it's for a reason um, Definitely made less money my first couple of years being a broker owner than I did uh, as a team lead and a solo agent. Um, but, you know, listen, you got to roll with the punches. And uh, I think over time it'll pay off for itself. 
Um, I'm not totally out of production. Um, I, I do produce, but it's mostly on a referral and past client basis. Um, that's my money to pay my bills, you know? Um, but I'm not, you know, I do, I, I run a lead driven brokerage. So I do, I do try, I do pump leads into my brokerage. Um, we're very much so harping on people as attendance at our sales trainings and coaching and, um, following up on leads. So, uh, we do have that kind of environment in my office. Um, it may not be the highest split. It's definitely not the lowest either. Um, but we provide a lot of value, a very value ed driven brokerage. I don't take any of those leads as a broker owner. Um, I, I more so am helping coach the agents on how to maximize their potential with the leads. Um, but I do still produce. I do still enjoy it. Um, I just left a listing appointment um, for for a referral. Um, so I do definitely still enjoy it. And I love being out in the field. But I think uh, a lot of people make the mistake thinking that they can be a high producing broker and also be a high producing agent. Um, it, it's hard because our clients almost change as a broker. Our clients become the agents rather than the buyers and sellers. Um, so I think you got to be able to say like, you know, you're going to eventually attempt to exit production or trim down on production. If you're going to be able to run a successful, uh, efficient brokerage, I, I think it's, an, I, I personally feel that if I was out trying to sell a hundred houses a year, and doing everything I could to sell houses that I would be neglecting something with the brokerage. I am so glad that you're, uh, you're saying this because for, you know, for, um, for our, for our immediate sphere of influence and people that like us, trust us and want to work with us. Um, I think it's hard to make that separation and say, um, I really like you. I respect you. I uh, appreciate that you're coming to me and you want to work with me. Uh, but I am, I'm a broker owner. I'm, I'm running the business and I am going to have you work with, uh, you know, one of my, my agents, they're going to take great care of you. Uh, but that's, that's a, uh, that's a hard concept, uh, to basically give to some of your, um, some of your people, uh, and and still keep the uh, loyalty and and trust. How do you overcome that? Yeah, I mean it's a, it's it's a it's a never ending battle. You know, I'm trying to find better ways to overcome that. Um, a lot of times, what I'll do is even like for like a listing appointment, if it's one of my one of my past clients or you know someone within my sphere or a referral, um, and I feel that it's just not something that I can manage being that I'm a broker. Um, I will bring an agent with me oftentimes to the listing appointment. So it makes them a little bit more comfortable with the agent. So I've done things like that, or I've joined in on a virtual buyer consult, just let them know that, Hey, listen, he's he or she, that's my best guy or gal. Um, you're in great hands. They're going to take care of you. Um, you know, so that's, that's how I've been bridging the gap there a bit. Um, you know, if it's my immediate past clients right now, I do service a lot of them. Um, but I am giving a lot out at this point too, cause it's just too much to manage. You know, something's gonna, something is going to be lacking, whether it's the service to my clients or it's the service to my agents and my office, something's going to be lacking because you can't do so many things at a high level. Right. Right. So I'm so, always trying to get better and improve with that. Uh, and that's, uh, that's really the, the goal of every business owner. Um, um, tell us about the area that you service. I used to live in, uh, before you, uh, you came on, I was telling the audience that I, um, I used to live in, uh, in Flushing Queens in okay. New York. And, and so, you know, I, am somewhat familiar with, uh, with your area, but you're our, na uh, you're our neighbor, but we, we do service Queens as well. So, um, we're located in Suffolk County. So the Eastern half of Long Island, that's where my office is located. Uh, we do have plans to potentially expand down to Nassau County, which is the county that borders Queens. Um, but yeah, so we, we service pretty much anything from everyone knows Montauk and the Hamptons. So we service pretty much anything from Montauk all the way to Manhattan. So we're, we're covering pretty much just about everything. We do cover the Bronx, Queens and, and Brooklyn. Uh, I would say that more than half of our business really rests in Suffolk County because that's where we originate from. Um, but we do service clients all the way out to Montauk, all the way out to Manhattan. So we cover everything. So, uh, so how does, uh, how does showing property, uh, look like, you know, are you hopping? Cause your, uh, public transportation is, um, is amazing 
our public transportation here in San Diego, California is in comparison to yours is non-existent. Sure. So, uh, so if we have to show property, we have to, uh, get in the car and, and drive. Um, but you have a lot more choices. How do you, um, how do you service, um, um, sure. You know, sure. Yeah. yeah, I would say 80% of our business um, is going to be in on actually like Nassau, Suffolk County. So it is suburban. Um, so we are mostly driving. Um, I'll give you an example. I bought my car 14 months ago. I have 36,000 miles on it. Um, wow. So the, just to give you an idea of the type of mileage I'm doing out here. Um, yeah, Long Island is very small, but it's also so very big. There's 8 million people here. Um, there's a lot of houses and a lot of places and a lot of traffic. So, um, yeah. So in the city, yeah, it's a little different. You could use the subways, you could use, you know, public transportation a little bit more, but I would say most of our agents are driving just like you guys. And we're sitting in a whole bunch of traffic. So, so you're trying to show at, uh, at other times other than, uh, the rush hour. We try our best, but you know, when people get out of work is the times that usually we got to do it. So, you know, uh, we do the best we can, but, uh, yeah, traffic is uh, the name of the game. We kind of just factor that in, in our calendar at this point. So, uh, so thank you so much for, uh, for coming in any, um, sure. any sure. tips or tricks for, for our audience, be it, uh, be it if they're buying or selling or, uh, or they're trying to uh, get into the business or, you know, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if you're trying to get into the business, um, you know, consistency is going to be your best friend. Um, a lot of people, they try things, whether it be door knocking, cold calling, mailing, they try to do a million things just a little bit and they don't get anywhere and they say, I give up, I quit. You know, and I see that a lot with new agents. Be consistent and have a plan. Um, find a good mentor if you're a solo agent or find a good team if you want to join a team um, or a good broker who operates like with that team mentality. Um, it's going to, it's going to take you a long way as far as having that mentorship. Um, but stay consistent, follow the path. You know, it really takes like two years to build a real business. Uh, in my opinion, um, that's when you start to see the referrals really roll in and the, and the fruits of your labor start to pay off. I think a lot of people give up too soon. So, so Mike, this this is so so valuable information. Even though we're we're cutting in and out of uh, each other's conversation, but it's uh, it's definitely definitely very valuable. So um, so I'm going to put your phone number hopefully on the board for people that uh, might want to uh, get in touch with you. Is this the best number to uh, uh, reach you and to get a hold of you? That is my direct cell phone line. You can get me anytime. And if you, I don't pick up, shoot me a text and I'll call you right back. And, and uh, also, uh, let me see if I can um, show your email. Is this, uh, is this also a way to get in touch with you? Absolutely. absolutely. Emails are a great way to communicate. I usually answer them every morning and every night, if not throughout the day. So absolutely, you can email me any questions, concerns, thoughts, opinions. Excellent. And uh, servicing servicing Long Island, New York with 30, 30 plus amazing agents that uh, that are uh, ready to go. And um, one other question for you. So 30 agents uh, uh, are your salespeople. How many people do you have uh, in your admin support team? Yeah, so that's uh, that's currently growing. So right now we have an operations manager who is salaried and full time. Um, we just brought on an ISA, which is, uh, for those who don't know, an inside sales agent. She's helping with lead nurturing, um, you know, because I find that a lot of leads fall through the cracks. So uh, the retention alone pays for itself. <laughs> um, and then uh, I am in the process of bringing on a sales manager as well to take a little bit of the listing appointment assistance, uh, the sales trainings off my hand. Um, but that's someone that's going to be a special person. So I am taking my time with finding that person. Um, and I do have a secretary as well, who is in charge of, you know, the day to day office routine stuff. So I have right now, I have three, um, staff on salary, uh, currently hunting for my fourth. So if you know, a high powered sales agent in long Island, that would be a great value add. So feel free to shoot me an email or text me with that contact information. I am on the hunt. There you go. There's your, uh, there's your phone number. So, uh, so <laughs> if anyone's uh, watching this and they're in the long Island area, definitely they can, uh, reach out to you. Perfect. So, uh,
So, uh, Mike, thank you so much. This is definitely very valuable. And, uh, and audience, if you are trying to uh, reach me, there's my phone number. And, and I operate out of uh, San Diego, California. And as you can see, Mike and I, uh, we, uh, we, are, uh, we are friends, we are colleagues, we are partners. And, and uh, from, from New York to California or anywhere in between, we have our connection, so reach out to us, and we can definitely uh, help you uh, get to where you want to go. There is my email address, and and uh, also um, and on Instagram, there's my Instagram handle. And if you are watching this on uh, on YouTube, please give us a uh, thumbs up. And if you have any co uh, comments or questions or suggestions, we always welcome those as well. So please leave them uh, there for us. And uh, Mike, thank you again for joining us. Thanks for having me. Sorry about the issues early on. Have a great day oh, and a great no weekend. Worries. Thank you so much. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.